This is the Classic Auto Mall Show. Broadcast from the studios inside the Classic Auto Mall in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Just one hour west of Philadelphia at Pennsylvania Turnpike Exit 298. Featuring nearly 1,000 classic, vintage, and barn find vehicles for sale under one climate-controlled roof. Now, here's your host, Classic Auto Mall president and the man with all the toys, Stuart Howden. Welcome, show number 153. I have to make a correction. I made a mistake last week. What? I called my new boat the wrong model. Oh, okay. <laughs> I called it a 255. It's a 257. Oh, I see. Right. So, see? Oh. you know, it's, we wire it 220, 221, whatever it yeah. takes. Shame right. on you. So, now now maybe we'll get some name submissions. Yes, we do. We're still, we're still after name submissions for the boat. Uh, the ones that we've gotten so far are pretty darn good. I don't know what I did with them, but they were somewhere here. Um, I, I did like Bodie McBoatface. That was... <laughs> the, the, the one guy who sent in the last one we got in was one of our listeners sent in because I'm the man with all the toys. Toy Ahoy. Uh huh. I liked that. That was, that was yeah. pretty good. I don't know. I liked uh, Pond Pontiac. That's yeah. Pretty... Hmm. Was that yours? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was just a suggestion. You don't get a bonus or anything. I know. It's well, just, you know. Yeah, so we're trying to fish. I'll throw a few ideas out there for folks. Oh, we're fishing for a boat name. Oh, there you go. Oh, gotcha. Perfect. How about the classic Auto Mall, and then I can make it a write off. There you well, go. There you go. I like like that yeah <laughs> so tax write-offs we love those get our get the suggestions into us by the 25th by sending to email of podcast at classicautomall.com okay, i very forgot good. where to send it <laughs> that's very good how many do we have in inventory today Mm-hmm. Come on. 950. 940. Oh, Ooh. I almost said 940. <laughs> uh, One of these days, I'm going to give you like something for if you get Last it, if week's you guess was 940. It. I know, but you should guess differently from time to time, right? Yep. So uh, thanks for tuning in and or watching on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. You can find us on americaswebradio.com uh, every Saturday at 10. 10 a.m. And then Eastern. on 98. Point. 80, 86, 86, <laughs> 860. 8, 8, 860 AM <laughs> and 97.5 HD2. If you say so. At 7 nope. AM in the Philadelphia region. Yes. WWDB. Including and, South New Jersey. Including South Jersey. And then, of course, on all the regular podcast sites and mm-hmm. on YouTube, which is getting some great traction. That's where you, you should listen to the show, watch the show. Watch, listen. It's more than just a sh- mm-hmm. podcast. It's a show. It's a lifestyle show with pictures and video <laughs> yeah. on YouTube. And graphics and charts. Yes, and exactly. Have, you know, That's right. Maps. Yeah, and we have maps. We have maps of <laughs> where we've sold cars to, which we'll get to after we have our first guest. That's on the right. Show because our first guest is calling us. It's probably about dinner or so. I don't know about what they o'clock. say. About four o'clock. It's about four o'clock in uh, yeah, across five, the p- five hours across yeah. the pond there in Hampshire, England. Welcome this morning, Alan Cathcart. Good morning, Alan. Good afternoon, Stuart. It's <laughs> well, tea time. It's <laughs> afternoon tea time in England. Some trumpets and scones and uh, crumpets and stroms, right? Or scones or whatever they call uh, it. Yes, or scones. <laughs> and, uh, and especially if it's a if it's a Cornish cream tea with clotted cream oh. and raspberry jam. Clotted cream sounds like it was left out of the refrigerator too long. <laughs> it doesn't. Forty doesn't taste like that. It's delicious. Well, I I, I never tried that. I had an English pub down in St. Petersburg, Florida, back in the day after I'd gotten divorced, and uh, which was not a good place to go to from a divorce to a bar. <laughs> that was that wasn't a good transition. But uh, and I loved uh, I loved bangers and mash, and I loved uh, uh, you know all the uh, uh, what's the um, the other one. Oh. Toad in the hole. Yeah. The hole. <laughs> and the Scottish thing, Scotch eggs, where you actually put yeah. sausage around an egg and deep fry it. I like that a lot. So, uh, but anyway, um, w- welcome to uh, have you on. Great to have you on the show. Alan is a racer, a journalist, an author. You've raced cars and motorcycles. Motorcycles has been your passion more than anything, right? Yes, yeah, true. And I'm one of those incredibly fortunate people, a bit like you, Stuart, by the sound of things. <laughs> who succeeded in making his passion, his hobby, his livelihood. Absolutely. And I'm, a, I'm a law graduate from Cambridge University, but I'm also a reformed lawyer. I went straight <laughs> and I went into the, uh, into the travel industry for about 12 years. I developed uh, what we call sales incentive programs, sales motivation programs to the UK with major American corporate, corporations like Chrysler and uh, RCA Victor, well, they were major in those days. Sure. And um, we, we hosted their dealers or associates 
on trips to Britain. And so it was kind of like show business because you had to make them feel that they were doing something they couldn't buy. Sure. So uh, go and have an afternoon tea at Lenin Palace, which in those, in those days wasn't open to the public. Right. But Winston Churchill's birthplace, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but then I began racing motorcycles as a hobby, and the hobby became my livelihood. Isn't that wonderful? It, it, it's nice to do that. We've, like I said, you, like you said, I've had the pleasure of doing that as well. And you're going to be the featured uh, honored guest at Radnor Hunt Concord de Elegance um, yes. this September. Indeed so. I'm looking forward to it very much. I've heard a lot about it without ever having attended it before. I have a very close friend, uh, Jeff Cray, uh, who used to live in Bucks County and uh, has would, would go to Radnor every every year to the concours and was even a judge on two or three occasions but uh he sadly now lives in wisconsin and poor uh, soul (laughs) yeah well and it's such a great event because it's held at a uh a hunter jumper farm uh in chester county i guess is that chester county steve yeah and uh and and the cars that they get they limit it to 100 cars and and motorcycles as well too john lawless heads up the motorcycle committee and does an amazing job he gets motorcycles that you've never even heard of yeah well john's the person who kindly invited me to to attend as the the guest of honor and i'm looking forward to doing so well because the featured marks this year are british uh, and of course, this is the 27th annual Radnor Hunt Concours, uh, held September 6th through the 8th uh, here in, in uh, Chester County. And uh, radnorconcours.org is their website if you want to buy tickets or find out more about it. But you'll be wandering the field out there uh, talking motorcycles, I imagine. I guess I will. And um, I know I've already got a lot of my many friends in, in New England who are going to be attending. It's uh, It's going to be nice to have a chance to meet up with the some of them I haven't seen for quite a while um and it'll be interesting to see what motorcycles have been selected for, sure. the, uh, for the show sure and and you have a connection here you wrote a book about a gentleman who is from this area indeed so uh, Dr John Whitner uh, a uh, former dentist from Philadelphia um who sadly passed away in in February this year but who before that built the most amazing Moto Guzzi, Italian Moto Guzzi race bikes, uh, with which he defeated the uh, the much bigger, stronger Ducati factory bikes. And also, I have to say, the, the British Northern Triumph Twins and American Harley Davidson. Right. And this was in uh, what used to be called the Battle of the Twins, uh, Pro Twins <laughs> now it's called, class, which was an AMA National Road Race Championship event in the 1970s, sorry, the 1980s. Right. And, um, oh, 70s and 80s. So it was uh, a means by which anybody who didn't have a four-cylinder Japanese motorcycle could race competitively, uh, usually with a European or an American twin. And uh, John uh, produced the Dr. John's Goodsies. And uh, I wrote, I was fortunate to be able to write each of those for a track test article. He even re- asked me to race one once for him in the Isle of Man TT. But wow. if you can believe that, the, I got my entry in and we were accepted. But the, uh, the boat, that, the ship that was, uh, that was uh, transporting them across the Atlantic, unfortunately, ended up in Copenhagen, Denmark, <laughs> rather than Liverpool, England. Oh. And the bikes never arrived, so I never raced them. But uh, John was a, a great guy, a wonderful person, and as I say, sadly passed away in, in, sure. in February this year. But I was hugely relieved to know that he had seen a copy of the book before he died. That's great. So, yeah. Did uh, what made his bikes faster, or were they lighter than the others? I mean, they were less power, yeah. right? Yes, um, high cam, uh, short push rod engine rather than an overhead cam motor. Uh, just a lot of very, very clever Dr. John's touches. <laughs> and a- he, w- he was a great uh, uh, acolyte of Alessandro de Tomaso, who many uh, car people, automobile people will know as the, the founder, obviously, of de Tomaso automobiles, but, um, and also the curator of Maserati for, for, for many sure, years. Sure, I'd forgotten that, yeah. Mm, but um, De Tomaso owned Moto Guzzi, 
and uh, he was looking for a way to try to find to make it relevant in today's sporting or well, those days sporting uh, arenas. And uh, Dr. John, out of his own pocket, had developed this motorcycle to AMA championship winning uh, level. Doug Braunek won the championship for uh, Dr. John's Goodsey in 1987. And uh, the result was that Alessandro De Tomaso took Dr. John under his wing and ended up employing him in, uh, mm-hmm. in uh, Moto Guzzi factory in Mandelo, Italy for several years. A dream, a dream gig for him, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so did you ever get to race the uh, Isle of Man? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm honored to say that I have done so and survived. I, <laughs> yes. I finished uh, fourth once, fifth once, uh, eighth, and ninth. Wow. Um, but I also crashed twice in places where other people were sadly killed. Right. So I was uh, uh, thankful to the good Lord for having spared me. Um, it's an incredible event, but uh, I raced there in the in the 70s and 80s uh, when I'm doing the ton, 100 miles an hour average speed, average lap. It was an incredible uh, achievement to conceive of lapping at 135 miles an hour average speed mm. nowadays around a 37 and three quarter mile circuit, which goes up the side of a 1400 foot mountain and back down to sea level uh, through two quite large towns uh, is just amazing. And, and they, and in talking to people that have ridden it, uh, they say that you have to know every turn, every bump, every everything. It, it takes a lot of re- – you just don't go out there and just go, here I go, and away you go. That's not how it works. You cannot, and especially now at the speeds the bikes are moving at. But uh, I was fortunate to to be able to spend a lot of laps on on street bikes learning the course and also getting people who had raced there uh, successfully uh, in many cases, um, to teach me, take me around in the van, get out and walk the course. Sure. And there are certain corners where you cannot see where the correct line is until you get out and do the fact. Right. But you don't want to learn at 100 and whatever miles per hour you're going. Precisely. Right? Anyway, when we return, see, I told you how quick this would go. When we return, we'll continue <laughs> our conversation with Alan Cathcart on the Classic Auto Mall Show. We'll see you in just a couple of minutes. The Classic Auto Mall has more than 1,000 vehicles for consignment in our huge 8-acre climate-controlled showroom. It's a real indoor mall. If you'd like to know all the advantages of buying and selling a car through consignment, the information is available on our website, or you can talk to a Classic Car Specialist who can answer all your questions. It's easy, safe, convenient, and it doesn't matter where you are, we sell worldwide. See our huge selection of classic and collectible vehicles at ClassicAutoMall.com. And we're back with the Classic Auto Mall Show from the Classic Auto Mall Studio in Morgantown, Pennsylvania, talking to our new friend, Alan Cathcart, over in uh, across the pond in Hampshire, uh, England. You're not far from Goodwood, are you? Indeed not, and that's one of the reasons why my wife and I moved here about 10 years ago, because uh, I'm 40 minutes from uh, the Duke of Richmond's estate oh. at, uh, at Goodwood, and uh, I competed uh, there in the in the racetrack that uh, that he he has uh, to the side of his house, um, and I've raced each year in the Goodwood Revival, which is I think the world's premier uh, historic car and motorcycle race meeting, sure. uh, as well as the Festival of Speed that he has each year up the driveway of his house in July, which is a class motor motoring garden party, and now. For the last, I think, uh, eight years, he's been running a third race meeting or third event in April, and it's called the Members Meeting. And this is, a, a again, a recreation of the club races that, uh, that he used to, or his, his father used to stage at, uh, at Goodwood Circuit. Sure. Well, of course... If it's not on your bucket list, and I don't consider you a true car guy, if you've never been to Goodwood, you got to go. I haven't been yet. I want to go. But what I've talked to people that have been there and have participated there is they say that that's an intimidating, any of the events are intimidating because they feel like there's so many eyes on you 
much more so critiquing what you're doing more than maybe a regular race. Oh, I don't know about that. I think that, that uh, there's it's a huge sense of camaraderie. Sure. Um, in the in the case of the revival, the, the Duke wasn't allowed to, to well, actually, he was still the Earl of March then. Right. Um, 20, 26 years ago, I can't remember when. I think it was 1998 was the first one. And the, the motor circuit had been uh, built out of a World War II uh, uh, RAF airfield runway, which the, they constructed on the, the Duke's land uh, as part of, of coastal defenses against the, um, the Nazis. And um, after the war, the land was returned to, to the Duke, but all concreted over. Right. And his son was a, a, a car racing fan, had been a Brooklyn's regular before the war, and he marked out a track with uh, hay bales and rubber cones, and they started racing. And uh, same thing happened to Silverstone, although it was obviously not the Duke who did that. Sure. And our two like, most iconic circuits in British uh, car racing and bike racing were both ex World War II airfields. Right. Um, Silverstone was owned by the British Racing Drivers Club, and they got the Formula One Grand Prix race um, from, I think, 1950 onwards. And Goodwood got the equivalent of the Le Mans 24 Hours for sports cars. Right. And that was the Goodwood Nine Hours, which took place each year. Uh, they also had non-championship Formula One races uh, staged there. And uh, it's funny to think that there were such things back then, <laughs> right. but indeed so. Um, but in 19... Uh, 1967, the Duke of Richmond was told by the REC that he had to line his track with metal barriers uh, to uh, to prevent uh, cars um, running off into the undergrowth. Um, and he refused. He said, "No, I won't do that." But, but your grace, we won't be able to give you a, a track license. That'll be your loss. <laughs> and he stuck. He offered to plow the land and to, to make the runoff, and wow. they turned him down. Wow. This is all part of Jackie, Jackie Stewart's uh, completely wrong-minded attempt to, to prevent uh, cars going off in, into uh, ditches, sure. the public road circuit, and so on. So Goodwood was shut down uh, from 1967 until 1998. And when the present youth got the license back again, um, he started having a, a historic racing, and we in the paddock were all asked to wear pre-1967 clothing, um, which, of course, our wives and girlfriends thought was wonderful because, <laughs> darling, I, I need three new dresses, one for each day. Of course. And, uh, well, the first year, it, we did that, and the public came, and it was extremely popular, very successful from the very beginning. And next year, about 60% of them thought, well, I can do that too. And they came back in completely involuntary in, in uh, 19, pre-1967 clothing. Nice. Uh, the next year, 98% came. Wow. And that's what happens now. So it's a true walk down memory lane in every way. Oh, that's so fantastic. And I love to see the period correct stuff like that. Now, let me see if I understand this correctly. Two things. Number one, is it Sir Allen... <laughs> I wish it were, but so far the King of England has not yet uh, crossed my shoulder with a sword. That's how they do it, right? They have to do. That's the, right. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> name, uh, the nickname, came from uh, the editor of Superbike Magazine in Britain, Grant Leonard. Um, and uh, the reason is because I'm a rather unusual kind of person to be a, a motorcycle journalist. Uh, like I said, Cambridge graduate, sure, and, uh, lawyer, rather public school background, uh, a, a reformed lawyer. But so he started calling me Sir Al in print <laughs> and it just caught on. That's so funny. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, and, and if I understand correctly, you rented a Ferrari Dino oh. from an Avis <laughs> rental car place in England and raced it. This sounds like Shelby Mustangs from the day. 
Yes, I'm afraid it's true. <laughs> I hope the, the statute of limitations has gone from that. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, this is honestly true. I was, I was about to turn 30, and I was extremely upset at the advent of what I saw as middle age. So I decided, I decided to do something at the age of 30 that you could only do at the age of 30, and you couldn't do when you're 29. And in those days, Avis UK did indeed rent Ferrari Dinos from their Marble Arch London office uh, to anybody aged 30 or more. So there was a, a race meeting each year, which I used to go to, run by the MCC, which was the second oldest uh, motorcycle club, which still exists today. And they combined car and bike racing on the same day wow. at Silverstone. So I entered my, uh, my Ducati 750 SS, green train uh, production racing motorcycle, and I went to uh, Avis and rented a Ferrari Dino <laughs> from them. And I uh, drove that down to Silverstone with my wife, well, my, my girlfriend, then, right. future wife, Stella, and uh, my American friend, Jeff Craig, that I shared a, a flat with in London, he rode the Ducati down. I raced the Ducati. I think I came third in the race, got a nice trophy. And I entered the Ferrari Dino in two events. One was the 25-minute high-speed trial. Right. And uh, you had to do X number of laps per, uh, in 25 minutes. And I did uh, X minus one, so I got a second, a second class award. <laughs> and so I got a trophy. Yeah, there and you go. I also, ended, I also ended it in the GT, the Grand Grand Touring uh race thinking that i would be able to just get on the back of the grid and drive around and that would be it in those days apps were much more uh gentlemanly on on track it was not a contact sport like it is now sure so uh unfortunately they put me on the second row of the grid and (laughs) because there was no time for qualifying you you just got uh, given you know one one uh, session of practice and then you raced so um I went to see the organizer and explained to him that, that I, had a, I had a road going sports car. Oh, Alan, I thought you had one of those 246 SP sports <laughs> racing Ferraris. That's why I put you there. Never mind. You'll be all right. <laughs> right. So um, I, let's just say that I, when the flag dropped, I immediately headed right to the side of the road <laughs> and let, let all the, 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 the fast guys pass me. And I wasn't lost. Right. I, I did beat a couple of other people, but I'm afraid the brakes are absolutely fried oh, by the end I of can, a 10 lap. I can only imagine. It, it's interesting that Ferrari was re- renting cars like that back in the day. You know, of course, like yeah. the Hertz was doing the GT350 Shelbys and people were racing them and, and all that. Um, you said something interesting uh, that I loved uh, and I had I had written, uh, written down. Uh, um, making it a ton. What was it? What was that? Doing the ton, and that's breaking the hundred mile per hour barrier, right? Yes, that's right. For, for the first time, I did that on a strangely not not on, on a modern motorcycle. I right. did it on a 1937 Rough Superior SS100. Those... And mm. I had uh, I bought that again. My my, my best friend Jeff Craig. Uh, an American was had come over to race motorcycles in the UK, which is how we teamed up. And we were coming back from a Brands Hatch practice day uh, in on a Wednesday in about 1974, and so we had a beat up old Ford Transit panel van with sliding doors. Right, and uh, we were going through Tooting, South London, on the way back to our flat in Ealing. Um, and uh, I was going past a guy unloading bikes from a, from a van that was just driving. Jeff shouted, stop! <laughs> yeah, I stopped, and he slid the door back, and he's beetled off back to this guy with, who's, with the bikes, and, I, I, well, I found somewhere to park, and uh, came back and discovered him deep in conversation with this very shiny uh, chrome tank B-twin. A motorcycle and a deep in conversation with the guy who was owning it, who was a man called Bro- Brian Beryl, who was Britain's top dealer in classic and car motorcycles, uh, classic and racing motorcycles. Um, and this turned out to be a uh, 1937 Matchless B twin engine, Prof Superior, that he just collected 
from a deceased estate. And Jeff said, I can't get over this. I never thought I'd see a brew superior. <laughs> and uh, and anyway, um, I recently sold my racing car. I, I started, did everything backwards. I started racing cars first before bikes. I did sure. vintage and classic bikes before super bikes, et cetera. So I just sold my racing car and I had uh, just over a thousand pounds in my bank account. And uh, Beryl was selling the Bruff Superior for nine nine five pounds. Those <laughs> days it's worth probably upwards of of, uh, of two hundred fifty thousand pounds today. Sure, hundred thousand dollars. And uh, I bought it, uh, in, uh, intending that Jeff should, when he when he had the money, he would buy it off me, give me the same amount, and, and, and he'd buy it, he'd own it. Which did indeed happen, but not before. <laughs> uh, I wanted to see for myself whether the SS100 tag really uh, was justified, because that was the, uh, the the model name indicating that it had been tested at 100 miles an hour or better in 1937. Wow, that's well, fast. I can only say that going down to... Uh, the A2 towards Maidstone uh, one afternoon, I did indeed do 100 miles an hour indicated on the Smith's chronometric. <laughs> it, was it um, doing that when you were there? Was it, was it was bouncing there. around, right? Th those motorcycles were uh, the best of the best, right? I mean, they were, even to this day, they're considered as great a motorcycle as there ever was, right? They were the first true superbikes. Um, Vincent owners always like to claim it was that Vincent was the first bike, but that Vincent was only invented in 1936. Right. And then Brussels Periods have been racing for 15 years very successfully. And they, another, they, were, right. they were wonderful bikes. Another great bike that you rode was the 1960 16 Harley Davidson eight valve board track racer. Ah. Wow. Oh, and and gosh. I read something funny. Not too often that a manufacturer deliberately priced a product out of the reach of the public by making it so expensive. <laughs> That's great. absolutely true. Uh, it had to be a commercially available motorcycle. Right. And uh, the last thing that Harley Davidson wanted was people to actually <laughs> buy it. And uh, and uh, they would then be forced to 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 supply parts and everything else for it. So they tried to price it out of the the the. The, the realms of, of commercial um, sale. Unfortunately for them, there were enough rich people around that <laughs> they bought them. Right. And a good friend of mine in, uh, in Australia, uh, has Peter Arundel, uh, has one of those bikes when he let me ride it on the, the Broadfoot circuit outside uh, Melbourne. Wow, how great is that? And and you know, you got to say when you look at the the Harley, I mean, that was a difficult bike to ride. You couldn't just hop on it and go. You needed to know sequences and clutches yeah. and timing and this and, and that. And also make allowance for the fact that it had very little in the way of brakes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Not fun. Broadfoot had two nice straights, so I could I could gallop along a bit. You know, and, and and another couple of things that I'd read that was so interesting is that uh, two more sayings that I read, either in your books or in articles, um, proving your bona fides, yeah. and and the other one was giving it the berries. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are these are very um, how can I put it uh, established British uh, <laughs> epithets. Yeah, giving it the berries means cracking it wide open as hard as you can go. And I don't know where the berries came from. I must look that up. Yeah, giving it the berries. Well, bona fides is a good legal term, which I learned <laughs> at university. Sure. Good, good faith that you are, you are who you claim to be. Well, and my favorite thing is your, your, uh, your statement that uh, losing your velocity virginity on the uh, Bruff Superior. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's so um, great. Well, it, uh, it had to happen sooner or later, and I, did, and I did it in a memorable way on a memorable motorcycle. Can you imagine in 1937 going 100 miles an hour on a motorcycle? I mean, I know it was even difficult when you did it, but back then, the, that, that kind of speed wasn't even available in hardly anything, right? No, it's true. Um, T.E. Lawrence, who Lawrence of Arabia, who was the man most closely associated with the Buff Superior brand, um, had seven of them, 
uh, in succession. And that's fortunately uh, passed away on one in a crash that was still to this day never plausibly explained. Right. Um, but uh, Lawrence would would kind of pick a, uh, a, a new bike up from the the uh, Brass Superior factory in in Nottingham, uh, England, and he would take off for the weekend, and he'd come back on Monday morning with a thousand miles on the clock, <laughs> and he and the tires completely worn, and uh, he would tell um, George Bruff, the owner of the company. Um, how many times he'd exceeded 100 miles an hour and wow. where. Wow. Uh, he was a brave man. And, and when you bought one of those, you got a certificate from the owner yes. stating that this t bike had been tested to go over 100 miles per hour. That's correct. Oh, my goodness. That was bona fides. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Proving the old bona fides, wasn't it? Right. Well, listen, this has been a delight. And we went way over the time. And, and I hope we didn't keep you from something, any tea or crumpets or scones. Or... I'll, uh, I'll, you, you've now uh, inspired me to go and put the kettle on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fantastic. And I can't wait to meet you in person uh, at the okay. Radnor Hunt Concours coming up in a couple of weeks. Alan Cathcart, thank you again for being on the show. We love visiting with you, and we'll see you soon. Thanks very much for inviting me, Steve. Uh, Goodbye. Take care. Whether you want to buy or sell a classic, collectible, or special interest vehicle, you need to visit the Classic Auto Mall website for more information. If you're looking to buy, you can easily search our inventory of more than 1,000 vehicles on the web at ClassicAutoMall.com. And we're back with the Classic Auto Mall show from the Classic Auto Mall stand. I'm to scare you there. No, I didn't realize I was getting into the music. <laughs> well, you can get into it. but Pot uh... that down. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. What a great guest. And wow. And by guy. the way, our longest distance guest yeah. ever. And we were just talking off air about how amazing that 20 years ago, this would have required satellite link ups and hookups and banks of computers mm -hmm. and people on both coasts and, you know, over the pond and people there and all kinds of lighting. And yeah. now we just knock it off like it's no big deal. We're talking to a guy from England. Yeah. Just, you know, I know. Do, does the signal go under the ocean? Is that is that where the signal goes? <laughs> it goes in the cloud. No, doesn't it go in, under the ocean? Doesn't <laughs> does it? it? I don't fiber still, optic? I still think so. Maybe There's fiber, fiber optic. Fiber yeah. optic. Under they, the ocean? They, layer, they laid a whole fiber optic cable across the ocean. Wow. Yeah. How do you fix it? I mean, where do you find the broken spot if there's an issue? Or yeah. uh, I don't get that. Why don't they so. put a bullet train down there? <laughs> well, maybe they are. Maybe they will. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you call your idea, people right? about that? Yeah. So where did we sell cars to last week? Where? Know? How about Browntown, Michigan, Strasburg, Pennsylvania, Yadkinville, North Carolina, Phoenix, Maryland, Robertsdale, Alabama, St. Simons Island, Georgia, Clareton, Pennsylvania, San Antonio, Texas, Detroit, Michigan, Solgen, Switzerland, San Pedro, California, North Attleboro, Massachusetts, Philadelphia, by golly, Pennsylvania, Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania, Sanatoga, Pennsylvania, Lowellville, Ohio, Fairfield, Texas, Broomall, Pennsylvania. Did the one in Switzerland have snow tires with uh, it? No, it it's was a, great a car. Chrysler 300. The great car. Oh, it that, really is. I wanted that one. I know. I like yeah. that car. That's a, Chrysler, <laughs> a 62 Chrysler 300H. Beautiful car. Uh, oh. Really amazing car. And, and, and going to a good home, the guy's a real car guy over there, which is really, really cool. And we're, um, and again, thanks to Alan Cathcart for spending some time with us and a uh, great guy. And, and there's so many, we could do five shows with him of all sure. the stuff that he's done in the motorcycle. You know, he used to, he used to test all the, the racing motorcycles back in the day, the Hondas and the Ducatis, and they would, he would write articles about them. Mm. And he was kind of their, you know, the go-to guy for everybody. Wow. Uh, and one time he wrote a pretty bad review about a Honda. And I guess, so Shirio, Honda or whomever said, uh, you know, he, they were like, well, we, should, we shouldn't use him. He's going to trash our motorcycle. And he said, no, it wasn't a very good bike to begin with. So he was right. He'll do the right thing, and he'll always be honest. Uh, it takes a special breed to ride motorcycles at speed. Oh, my gosh. And Man of, what is the Man Island? Isle, Isle of Man. man that Have you watched that? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, crazy it's, time. It's, 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 it's really, really Different crazy. breed. What's yeah. it called when you go uh, over 100? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, the doing the ton. Ton. Oops, I, I bumped the button. Yeah. I, I did the ton with my Honda 750, speaking the, of Hondas. Ooh, that's going fast. And then proving your bona fides. I love that. And giving it the berries. 
Yep. My grandmother used to say when somebody was a little different, like one of my friends, she'd say, that boy has the peculiars. <laughs> <laughs> so, my dad used to say, that's the berries. Yeah. See, I never heard any of those. So mm-hmm. I figured Alan would know if anybody. So <laughs> um, some of the new arrivals. How about the 1963 Mercury Comet convertible? Now, this is an affordable classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a convertible. Checks all the right boxes. It's got, um, it's it's a white over red. It's a nice color combination. Very original example. It's got the inline six, which is okay. Plenty yeah, of power for yeah, that car. Sure. It's not like you feel like, oh, God, this thing is 200 mm-hmm. power. It's not at all. And, of course, the styling was pretty cool. And they were plain looking, sort of like we talked about last week, like the Novas and mm-hmm. the, and the uh, what were the other? Falcons. The Falcons. Just, they were kind of boxy looking mm-hmm. in a cool way. Yeah. The El Caminos back in the day were as well, too. So, and then, of course, it's twin. The 63 Ford Falcon Futura convertible, brick mm-hmm. red over black, sporty drop top mm-hmm. driver it is, um, 260 cubic inch, two barrel V8, mm-hmm. and a four speed top loader manual. It's got good bones, as it's said in the uh, description. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. And then this thing, <laughs> the next one. Oh, yeah. The 2024, I guess it's a 2024. It doesn't have a, not really That's a right. make or model. I think it was built in 23 or 24. It's a 2024 custom rock crawler. Yes. This thing looks like it could climb over our building without even <laughs> taking a breath. You know, we have a little of everything here at Clemson. We do. We this do. is a really unusual vehicle. We don't, we've met, I don't think we've ever had a rock crawler. No, I don't I'm believe not, we have. I don't know how many we'll have in the future. but Green metallic over black and orange, full custom build. I mean, this thing is, every part of it is a brand new part that yes. didn't came off. Didn't came off. Didn't came off. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the YouTube channel to see what this thing looks like. Didn't yeah. come off. Of, no, the, no parts probably came off a... Uh, a manufactured vehicle, right. right? This is all just parts and extras. Custom and build. Custom build. 350 cubic inch Ramjet V8, 12K uh, remote worn winch, winch, front and rear steering, pull down winches, Rockwell axles. This thing is bad to the bone. It's it's purpose built. Yeah. And uh, I think I make reference to Matt's off-road recovery in the in the description and that's a youtuber who's got like two million views he, he rescues cars in utah right. from canyons and my sister's stuff. favorite show i uh, mine too i love it and you so you see rock crawlers on right. that's the only other place i've seen them other than in this mall it's interesting to see one around here because there's not mm-hmm. that kind of yeah competitive rock crawling if you will yeah. or even <laughs> sand dunes yeah, to right. go you know where are you going to go ride this it's thing? true i mean there are sort of mountain trails and i guess you could take it there i, I guess so different grades but uh, probably yeah. might get scolded by the local <laughs> jarred arms yeah pro- probably <laughs> uh other new uh, arrival this week 1966 buick skylark gs hardtop silver mist and regal black over black this mm-hmm. is one cool mm-hmm. car yeah. 401 cubic inch Wildcat V8. Uh, this is the gentleman's muscle car. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like the Grand Prix and the Skylark from this era. And, you know, some of these other cars that were, you know, the Impala uh, had lots of power, but were, you know, a little more luxurious and comfortable than, say, a Camaro in the late 60s or uh, even some, of the you know, the Malibus and the Chevelles in the early uh, mid 60s. Mm-hmm. And this thing, two speed automatic. Uh, and it's got power brakes, which is nice. It's a bonus. <laughs> it's a real bonus. This is a uh, what I call a lottery car. That if I if I won the lottery, this one would be in it. I just love these these uh, old square body Buicks. And they're great drivers. Good drivers. You know, beautiful you car. Can, uh, Pontiacs and Buicks, for some reason to me, drove about as good as any car, including mm-hmm. Cadillacs or Lincolns. Actually, better than Lincolns without question. Mm-hmm. Cadillacs were pretty close, and that the, the, that that big the three there that uh, they just drove nice. They were just it's funny. I was talking to somebody uh, who I'll I'll let you in later. Anyway, uh, <laughs> his dad drove a car that you wouldn't expect. He drove an Oldsmobile Tornado because mm. he's used to driving race cars and huh. fast cars and cars that are loud and smelly and oily. And yeah. a Tornado, you just get in, put yeah. it in drive, and away you go. And sometimes sure. that's a plus. Yeah. Great driving car. <laughs> yeah. And uh, other new arrival, the 2020 Chevrolet Camaro Yanko SC Stage 1 hardtop. <laughs> God, this thing is yep. nuts. Rally green metallic over medium ash gray. One of 25 build, 11,000 actual miles, 1,000 horsepower. Mm-hmm. Uh, iconic Yinko style, near showroom fresh. And Yinko opens back, Yinko goes back into the late 20s. They had a Durant dealership, which became Chevrolet back mm-hmm. in the day. Uh, and then, of course, they were the ones who figured out the loophole on how to order cars from Chevrolet and General Motors and check a box and get a bigger engine that they were not supposed to be able to get because there was a, a edict that came down from corporate that huh. said you can't put a 427 in a 
seri- or generation one Camaro. And he figured a way around that with the central office production order where you check the right boxes and the guy on the factory floor just went, well, that doesn't seem right, but it's supposed to be the 427, so let's just stuff her in there and away we go. That's and, right. Bill, and all, she, Bill Cheat says it. So. Bill Cheat says it, so it must be so. <laughs> and, of course, the, the Yankos went on to become the most coveted uh, Camaros uh, out there and regularly bring you know, yeah. two, three, four hundred thousand mm-hmm. oh, dollars when they're when they're an equal counterpart might bring 50 grand mm-hmm. uh, because of that it uh, great cars and and what a what an iconic thing and of course they were in uh, in Bentleyville in Pennsylvania right here in so Pennsylvania. right here yeah there's a lot of car stuff that happened it is Yank- the building's still there apparently I don't know it's I think it's an art museum now but the well, Yanko odd. dealership yeah. is yeah. still there and you know a thousand horsepower in a car Oh yeah, that thing's a beast. And people, talk, you know, the, we talked about last week. The new ZR One's got a thousand horsepower, mm-hmm. and the new Lamborghini's got a thousand horsepower. Right. The new Lamborghini is nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars. This Yanko Camaro, but the same horsepower, a little bit less. Yes, <laughs> considerably <laughs> less. And now the one that is coveted by everyone here to be their daily driver yes. is the two thousand ten Porsche Panamera S. Everybody loves this car. It's a good looking car. It's a good looking car. It's one of those ones. It's reasonably priced. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of bang for the buck. It's fun to drive. I mean, it's the S model, so it's got the 4.8 liter DOHC V8, mm-hmm. double overhead cam, yes, sir. if you will, dual clutch, seven-speed automatic, uh, 55,000 miles. So not low, but not high. Right. Porsches are pretty bulletproof. They'll run quite a few miles. Not many people put that many miles on them, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, and the back seat of this thing is very comfortable. It's amazing. I yeah, mean, well, a full-size adult, no yeah, problem. A full-size adult and uh, no, no issues whatsoever. Yep. When we return... We'll talk about some more car stuff here on the Classic Automobile Show in just a couple of minutes. See you then. Buying and selling via consignment is safe, easy, and secure. We advertise, sell, and ship worldwide. And if you'd like to know all the advantages of selling your car through consignment, the information's available on our website, or you can talk to a classic car specialist who can answer all your questions. Plus, you can easily search our inventory online at ClassicAutoMall.com. And we're back with the Classic Auto Mall Show from the Classic Auto Mall Studio, listening to our friend Pat Travers, who was just in Knoxville, Tennessee the other day. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? How about that? <laughs> anybody, anybody? I mean, it, he, he performed in, in yes, Knoxville. he performed I, I in got, Knoxville. Got, um, he wasn't just passing through. No, well, he could have been passing through. He, was, he passed through when he, after he was done performing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd recognize him if, he, if I bumped into him on you the street. Would? No. Oh, well, that's a that's, shame. You should do your homework on that. <laughs> this will first air... Uh, uh, August the 10th, 2024. I think he was there August the 2nd or 3rd uh-huh. or something. I wanted to go, but I waited too late and forgot it was too late mm-hmm. and didn't get to go. So, hey, last week we talked about our buddy uh, Steve Mignante and his GoFundMe page. I don't know what it's up to as of today. I know uh, he's got encephalitis and the medical bills. He had to sell his cars and his house and pro- probably his die cast. Maybe not anymore, and, according to the. Yeah, GoFundMe. he got four. It was at 431000 last week. But if you get a chance, Google Steve Mignante GoFundMe page, and if you can spare a little extra change or whatever for him, that would be great because mm-hmm. uh, great guy, very knowledgeable, great friend of the hobby, great friend of our show. We He was a guest on the show a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Has it been that yes, long? Yes, it has been a couple of years. God. It's on YouTube, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to watch that, that interview. Yeah, I would think so. If you go to YouTube and type in Classic Good Auto Mall, Steve Mignante. He's a good guy. And Mignante is not like it sounds. It's M A G N A N T E. So right. Uh, but if you get a chance, check that out. I just read that Recaro Seats went and filed Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Oh, really? I bet you got to think that any of those aftermarket companies that used to be so popular back in the seventies mm-hmm. and eighties. I mean, who needs an aftermarket market stereo now when you got these massive stereos that these cars put in? They don't want you to buy them. There's no reason to buy an aftermarket yeah, that's stereo right. or aftermarket seats or aftermarket. It's, for that matter, wheels. Even. It's true. I mean, a lot of people still buy but BBS wheels. Just filed for bankruptcy. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So two companies, Recaro Seats. I love the rainbow colored yeah, ones. Those? That, yeah, that yeah. were so cool. No, you were the, you were the man. If you yeah, had those. I wanted I, I wanted to build a Camaro from the ground up. Take a plain Jane seventy five seventy seven Camaro and make it a a canyon carver. We would call right, it. Right, right, right. A road machine, wide tires, flared mm-hmm. fenders, sure. everything that you can have in a Recaro Seats. All the engine upgrades that you can have, an Alpine cassette player back in the day, yep, or a Nakamichi. That was the really cool oh one. Yeah. yeah, high end. That, that high was end really stuff. the high end stuff. And the a, a is the ADS where the box speakers that 
They had, and they were literally, they were on mounts in the back uh-huh. uh, of where your six by nines would normally right, be. Right, right. The triaxles. Yeah. Jensen triaxles. Oh, is that what they were called? Well, those were those. These were ADS box speakers. And you could uh, unscrew them from the uh-huh. little post that held them in there, and you could take them out, put them on the roof of your right, car. Right, and right. You had a, an instant party. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> and, uh, but no, I always wanted, and Recaro seats were on the top of the list, and a manual five speed. Back then, it would have been a Doug Nash five-speed mm. made manuals. And then Doug Nash made manuals or a uh, 4 plus 3 for the Corvettes. Remember those? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. They had that 4 plus yep. 3. C- on the C4s. Yeah, on yep. the C4s. That was the C4, wasn't it? Yep. Those were really cool. And we, uh, I don't know, did we talk about it last week, but John Force is finally out of rehab. I and don't think we mentioned it. We mentioned yeah. I know you had brought it up, and we're wishing him the best. We and, do. Uh, man, oh, man, oh, man, what a crash that was. He's yep. lucky to survive that. Sure. You know, yeah. eighty. Maybe I'll hang it up now. I mean, I'm just wondering. I'm not. I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying maybe you will. I would. I, I think. I, I, I think that would be my wake up call. But yeah. but yeah. you know, guys like him are not. They're built different. different. They're built yeah, different. Right. They're yep, a different they breed. Yep. And uh, I think that a guy like him will probably never give up. He'll either die in a race car, sure. or he'll die on his way to being in a race car. You yeah. know, I mean, that's just the mm-hmm. nature. Of yeah, him. from somebody that left turns in front of him. That would yeah. be the <laughs> irony. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. After he's done that a few times himself, uh, we were t- we didn't get to last week also about some of the great cars that are coming up in Monterey in the next couple of weeks. Uh, actually, it'll be next week. Monterey Is starts. It? Yeah. Oh, I didn't get my plane ticket to you. <laughs> well, Ooh, sorry. You better hurry because you know well, they're more expensive closer to the day. <laughs> so, in case you didn't know that, didn't they've know. got some serious Ferraris for sale. Do they? Oh my God, they've got them. And, and then of course they've got uh, a Ferrari Formula F1 car uh, from 2002. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eight to ten million estimate, and then they got a 2006 McLaren Mercedes Formula One car estimated two point eight to three point five million. There's four vectors. Oh my gosh! At RM, four of them. Four? What people? Yeah. It was a unloading vectors. I don't know. I, it's it, got to be the same guy, I would guess. That's, really? That's selling four vectors. How many vectors did they make? Not, not, not many. very many. That was a whole weird deal. That was a cool car. Yeah, though. it was a very cool car. Twin turbo V8. Yeah. Um, they were going to compete with Lamborghini and Ferrari, and and it's not that they didn't compete. I just don't think they had enough money, right? Right. Or they didn't they didn't anticipate how much money they would need. <laughs> Maybe it was the better way. Is there to one? Put that. Somebody has one in a museum around here. I don't know if it's Mascaro it, or Jerry Weigert is the one who built these things, and his his desire was to build a fighter jet on four wheels. Mm-hmm. That's what he wanted. And these things said uh, in 1993, the list price seven hundred and sixty five thousand yeah, dollars. Wow. So there's two 93s, a 91, and a 96, huh. uh, all for sale. Uh, so good luck with that. That's at RM. Uh, uh, Broad Arrow's got a 2003 Ferrari Enzo, mm-hmm. 4.5 to 5 million. That would have been a nice investment. Mm-hmm. I think you could have bought one of those for a little cheaper in yep. 03. But how about this? Uh, Broad Arrow's also got a 1913 Mercer 35J runabout, mm. 2.5 to 3 million. Really? I mean, this is like a bare bones, oh, yeah. like you see Corky Coker and his guys mm-hmm. running, or like you see, yeah, we have actually a Peerless we mm-hmm. have right over there, mm-hmm. and uh, an o- Overland. Yeah, the yeah, other the Overland. One? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. good memory. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, Meekum's got a, and these are all uh, upcoming cars at uh, uh, Monterey coming up, uh-huh. which is like the the where I should be, but I never am. Yeah. This is too long to be gone. It's a Just, bucket list. It's a bucket list thing. Uh, Meekum's got a 1969 Ford GT40 lightweight, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. one of 10 factory competition wow. lightweights, original engine, chassis, and transaxle. So mm-hmm. rare, uh, desirable, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. cool, checks all the boxes. Everything. I mean, what's it going to bring? I don't know. It doesn't even have an estimate on it, which is kind of scary. They also have a 69 Dodge Hemi Daytona. One of 22 produced with a four-speed original 426 mm, Hemi. Mm. Um, and they've got a, a 70 Hemi Cuda convertible. Okay. <laughs> One of 14. Yeah. I mean, they just don't exist. That's a seven-figure car. All day long. Mm-hmm. Seven-figure plus. If yeah. That's the way to put it. <laughs> And then, of course, BMW 507, which we had one here not too long ago. Love not for it. sale, but we had one visit us. Mm-hmm, cool. Those are so cool. Uh, and then a true 71 Ferrari 365 GTS Ford Daytona Spider. Most of the, the the convertible Daytonas you see were aftermarket done. Yes. They weren't factory That's right. uh, Daytona Spiders. And this is one of 22, 122 produced. Um, four-time a Platinum Award winner at Cavalino, which is the... It's the Super Bowl for Ferraris. Mm-hmm. Uh, just an amazing car. And then uh, Meekum's also got a Scarab, 
uh, Formula One car, mm-hmm. uh, one of three produced, uh, Lance Reventlow's company back in the day. And it was America's first Formula One car. I mean, these things are so, I have a model of that. Do you? <laughs> I think Meister Brow was the sponsor oh, of those, cool. the Ooh, beer company. Yeah. Meister Brow, B-R-A-U. Mm, mm, yum, yum. yum. And uh, one of the final 959 Porsches is at Bonhams. Mm. Um, listen to this, Bonhams has also got a DeLorean, DMC-12. Okay. 1,200 miles from noon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They're out there. They're definitely out yeah. there. But the, maybe the piece de resistance is the 1938 Alfa Romeo 8C 2900B Lungo Spider. Oh, wow. Estimate 16 to $20 million. Hmm. Once owned by our neighbor, our former neighbor, Dr. Mm-hmm. Simeon, yep. who's no longer with us, uh, never offered at a public auction. And then, of course, uh, Gooding's got the 61 Ferrari 250 GT short wheelbase California Spider. Fifteen to seventeen million. Isn't that crazy. Hmm. It's just hard to believe that 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 there's enough people to buy yeah. uh, these cars. <laughs> Gooding and Company, which is a great auction house, they all are, uh, has forty six of their hundred eighty six vehicles for, offered for sale that are estimated over a million dollars. Wow, forty six. It's amazing. Yeah, the hobby is alive and well. And somebody has uh, Sammy Hagar's La Ferrari. That's it's coming a- up at Barrett Jackson oh. in September. They're doing another event. I think it's September. We'll have to look up the date on that. We'll tell you next week. But uh, uh, Barrett Jackson's doing another Scottsdale auction. So they do their one in January. That they've been mm-hmm. doing for 40, 50 yeah. years now. And and now they're going to do another one in September, a smaller version. And Sammy Hagar's LaFerrari is the feature car in an odd cream color. Yeah, yeah. I think it was all custom ordered. I remember when he got it mm-hmm. and he, he went there to, and he fitted him with the seat. The seat right. was fitted to yeah. Sammy Hagar. So that's, so that's kind of cool. So what happens now with the new guy? Well, you got to fit into it. <laughs> yeah. you, better, you better be Sammy Hagar's girth. <laughs> He's about 5'4", five, you know, 5'4", one, one, 150. He's not 5'4". <laughs> and speaking of Ferraris, uh-huh. you know, I have something else in common with our guest today. What's now, that? Uh, besides running the ton, right. I also drove a rent Ferrari over a hundred miles an hour really? in Las Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You could rent those. They still do. I yes, think they can. still I rent think those. I sent you a photo of the yellow yeah. one that I had, I and I, so. I had got up a hundred or hundred and twenty out in the desert, and I thought it was going to fall apart because you could <laughs> tell that thing was road hard and put away wet. Absolutely. <laughs> Nevada those Highway co- Patrol, you know where to find you. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah, statue of Limitations is not out of right. reach for him, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> You know, we were talking. We were uh, talking about this car that we saw on Bring a Trail the other day, the '75 AMC Matador Oleg Cassini edition. Oh, wow. Ooh, baby! Yeah, we were talking about designer editions of cars. Yes. Lincolns were real popular with That's designer right. editions. They had the Bill Blast, mm-hmm. the Gucci. Uh, was there a Halston? No, there wasn't a Halston. Uh, Givenchy. Yeah. Is that what you said that? Yeah. You said that no, one? I didn't say that. Bill Blast. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gucci. Gucci. Yeah. Givenchy. I believe so. What about Hermes? No, <laughs> they didn't. Have no, one. but they. Uh, Who else had designer cars like that? I don't. I don't think anybody did. But uh, so what, Chrysler what, did have a Frank Sinatra edition. Uh, they did have yeah, a Frank really Sinatra good. edition. Very but, cool car. But it's funny that Lincoln kind of cornered the market on yeah. on designer it's a co-branded. Connected. Well, it's co-branded. Ford in general with the Eddie Bauer and you know, sure, that's other. true. They they carried that uh, through. And mm-hmm. the the one the uh, seventy five AMZ Matador Oleg Cassini edition brought twenty nine thousand dollars <laughs> on bring a trailer. Sure wow. One eighteen hundred built with a three sixty. So in seventy five that was pretty good size engine. Of course mm-hmm. it only had one hundred seventy five horsepower. Right, right. Finished in classic black with copper uh, interior and exterior highlights sure. and copper carpeting. Neat. So very cool. Very that? cool. So. That's all we got to talk about all for right. this week on the Classic Automobile Show. Another Maybe, awesome uh, show. Another awesome show. And uh, next week we're going to have a great guest. And uh, we'll just tease you and say, if you like Ferraris, you'll you'll like next week's guest. Right. And be, sure to, be sure to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can watch the shows as well with visuals. Absolutely. We'll see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to the Classic Auto Mall Show with your host, Stuart Howden. Executive producer, Steve Safier. Produced and engineered by yours truly, J.R. Russ. Available on ClassicAutoMall.com, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Music, courtesy of the Pat Travers Band. For tour dates, contact, and stuff, visit PatTravers.com. Produced by Car Smarts Media. Copyright. All rights reserved.